The heat dome swallows the lower 48, triple digit temperatures for 60 million Americans. In some places it's a dry heat, but other places are sweating with heat indices pushing 110. We'll time out the latest. Record heat both in Europe and close to home. Highs as hot as 115 degrees in Oklahoma and Texas. We'll recap the records and tell you what it all means. And a pattern that favors severe weather over the upper Midwest. Our crystal ball is still a little bit hazy, but we're seeing signs that there could be a few feisty storms. Hail, wind, and even a few tornadoes possible. Hi, gang. I'm my radar meteorologist, Matt Cucci, here in Washington, D.C., where the A.C. is on full blast, and frankly, I'm still sweating. We're seeing highs approaching 100 degrees here this weekend for the first time since 2016. But over the center of the country, highs have approached 115. Let's start off with where the heat is now. We shunted it a little farther south today. Take a look at where the heat alerts are. Push more a little bit towards the east coast, the south, southern Texas, and the southwest. That's because a weak cold front is sagging south, briefly causing the heat to kind of quell a little bit. The hottest temperatures you'll see on the map for tomorrow come to us from Mojave City along the Colorado River which separates Arizona and California, right off the southern tip of Nevada. 118 degrees, that's 118. You also see the big time heat in the San Joaquin Valley of California, as well as hundreds from the Texas-Mexico border all the way east towards the Mississippi River. Yuma, Arizona is also looking at a 117, which could be out the previous record of 116 set back in 2006. Phoenix will be closer to 114, which will fall a couple degrees short of a record. Regardless, hot, hot, hot. Let's go to Texas now. Pretty much every major city there will be at or just above 100 degrees, essentially until further notice. It's actually a cool down from what's been the case lately. Wichita Falls, Texas hit 115 on Tuesday. They're right there along the Red River, which is the southern border with Oklahoma. That's the hottest July temperature ever recorded, with records dating back about 100 years. In fact, only two days have ever logged a higher temperature in Wichita Falls, June 27th and 28th, 1980, which came at 116 and 117 respectively. That made Tuesday the third hottest day in Wichita Falls in more than a century. In Oklahoma City, a similar thing. The Sooner State's capital got to 110 on Tuesday, the first time since 2012. Both 2011 and 2012 each hit that mark three times, but before that only had twice since 1948. OKC was over 100 for five days straight. The hot spot in Oklahoma on Tuesday, though, was Mangum in southwestern parts of the Sooner State. They hit 115 degrees as well. And look at all the places that made it past 110. Every single one of the 120 weather stations in the state were at or above 103. Now those temperatures are crazy, but still shy of the all-time state record in Oklahoma of 120 degrees. That was set at Altus in southwestern Oklahoma on August 12, 1936. Many point to that record and then disregard recent heat to assert that climate change isn't a thing. They say, oh, it was hotter in the 1930s, so it can't be warming today. That argument doesn't really hold water. You see, in the 1930s, we had something called the Dust Bowl. Over farming and land mismanagement meant the topsoil all blew away and all the grasses that trapped the moisture died. Dust storms wrought havoc as the landscape became parched and arid and the leftover bone dry air heated up like crazy. It was mostly a product of the extreme drought we had. Comparing that to today is simply apples and oranges, completely different biomes. Going back to Oklahoma, 24 stations on the Mesonet set their all-time record on Tuesday. That's impressive, but it's not that impressive considering the Mesonet's only been around a little longer than I have been, and I'm like 24. Here's a cool thing though. Just before midnight Tuesday night, Watonga jumped up to about 100 degrees in northwestern Oklahoma. That's because of something called a heat burst or a collapsing thunderstorm. You see, the core of the storm didn't have anything supporting it anymore, so it collapsed, the air rushed down, it warmed up, and it dried out. The result? Gusty damaging winds and a sudden hot breeze. Now to Texas. Austin and San Antonio are both over 40 days each at or above 100 so far this year, a record for this point in the season, and beating out 2011, which was a banner year for drought and for hot temperatures. Unsurprisingly, there have been some fires too. About a dozen cropped up in the early parts of the week in north central Texas, though most were small. The exception was the Chalk Mountain Fire in Somerville County, southwest of the DFW Metroplex. 6,339 acres have burned since its ignition around 2.30 p.m. on Monday. It was only about 10% contained as of Thursday afternoon. 
Now the heat dome is sitting and slowly meandering east, but that's about it. It's sticking around, it's languishing, it's here for the long haul. It'll keep 100s in the forecast of the plains, really, as far as we can forecast, at least a week in advance. It's also bringing heat in the mid to upper 90s to the east coast. DC, Baltimore, Philly, New York City. Toasty weather coming through at least Sunday. There's a roughly 50-50 shot that DC's Reagan National Airport hits 100 degrees for the first time since July 25th, 2016 on Sunday. Now, the thing about heat in DC is that it's not a dry heat. Believe me, it is sweltering and humid. Essentially, swimmable air. Dew points will be near 70, pushing heat indices to around 105 or 110. It's just downright sweltering outside. That's also the case in the deep south and the southeast. Look at these dew points. In the 70s every single day and night until further notice. That'll make for super steamy, sweaty conditions and heat indices in the downright dangerous category. So if you work outside or if you know elderly folks, make sure everybody is taking precautions, staying hydrated, making sure they beat the heat. Now, there's not much in the way of widespread storminess beneath the heat dome because it brings sinking air, but there is some nasty weather coming to the upper Midwest on the heat dome's northern periphery. That's where level 3 out of 5 enhanced risk of severe weather is up for Sunday. La Crosse and Madison, Wisconsin, as well as Rochester and Albert Lee, Minnesota are included in that zone. A slight risk reaches to Minneapolis, St. Paul, so the Twin Cities, Green Bay, Sheboygan, and Rockford, Illinois. You can just barely see the impetus, a little feature of cold air aloft over Manitoba and Saskatchewan, Canada. It there's this little sort of finger that flicks past the U.S. northern tier and upper Midwest over the course of the weekend. That cold air upstairs will destabilize the lower atmosphere, allowing for storms to build up as air rises. Meanwhile, we have a pulse of strong winds at high altitudes moving overhead thanks to the jet stream. That change of wind speed and or direction with height, known as wind shear, can help a few storms to rotate. Hail, damaging straight line winds, and even a few tornadoes are possible with storms that form. Tornadoes probably earlier in the life cycle, then eventually more clusters with that wind risk. In the meantime, tons of track weather-wise, we'll be doing exactly that. Keep it tuned to MyRadar on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and right here in the MyRadar app. I'm MyRadar meteorologist Matthew Pucci. Hopefully you can stay cool. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.